This is code.org. Let's see what we have here. All right. So our user story, the user perspective, I would like for notification notification messages that gets displayed to be chosen at random. Oh, the notification. All right. So we already set this up last time. This, uh, this triangle is indicating that we aren't using it yet. So it's going to help us out. Display one of it the elements in your notification list randomly ooh uh when a user adds bird to their favorites list so let's go ahead and make it take us to the spot we are at milestone six okay so function update notification let's see where this executes oh all right it's here so function update favorites well that actually doesn't help us much what calls that it is update favorites is called by the favorite button. And so what happens here, guys, is when I have a bird and I click on the event that I click the favorites button, which is this guy, click. What happens is it goes, okay, favorite button clicked. I got to run this code. It appends an, an item to my favorites list. And that item is going to be the name at that particular index. So American purple thing is appended. And then it asks this method to execute update favorites. And it goes bloop. And by method, a method is a function bloop. And it runs this code next. This code is going to output the favorite text here. It checks if I have room for more favorites. Um, and if I don't, I hide the favorite button. And then I update notifications, which executes this update notification. This calls it, says, hey, run this code down here. But nothing is actually happening yet. So we need to set the notification text. Let me hit reset. If I hover over this area, I can see the ID of where it's going to be displayed. I can also head to design mode and click. OK, so notification label is where it's going to be set. And they actually provide an example here. So let's go ahead and go to UI controls and set text. Bloop. Now, what do we want to do? I'm going to click this little down arrow triangle thing and grab my notification or notification label. And then now I'm not going to set it to text. So I'm going to get my cursor behind the quotes here and just delete all of this. Because what I want to set it equal to is something from my notifications list. I'm going to head over to variables and grab a list. Now, if I go up here to my notifications list, I added three values. They want me to do this randomly, which is fine. We can definitely do that. So, but let's just first test. I'm going to type and I'll set it to index one because let's test as we go. Bloop and add. So fly. Oh, I should put an exclamation point in that. Great, that feels better. I can tell you notice the difference. Okay, so that is working. However, again, we got to do this randomly. So I'm going to head into math here. And remember how random works. The first value is the min, the second value is the max. So I'm going to do zero because all indexes start at zero. Now I know we only have three elements. So I would do two for the max. However, I'm going to actually do something fancier, but let's just test this first. One more try. You got to be careful here, though, because if you put three, the list length is three. But remember, indexing starts at zero and you'll get that error. Okay. However, let's say if we keep adding to index for some or to our notifications, I want to add six more. And I don't want to remember to come down here and update this so it includes every item in my list. A good approach to handle something like that is I'm going to head to math and throw in a minus sign. And then I'm going to head to variables. Or I'll just type. I'm going to do, I'll switch to text mode real quick. So I want notifications.length minus one. Because remember, the length of notifications is one larger than the last index because we index at zero. Cool. Let's give this a shot. Excellent. Oh, I'm so good at puns. Nice choice. Cool. Onward. 